I'm Dave Austin, I'm head of e-commerce for, for Europe at Clarks. Uh, in Clark speak, Europe doesn't include the UK. Uh, and in terms of what I'm going to go through, I just want to give you a bit of background on what Clarks do, give you a bit of context, then I'm going to talk about the experience I've had running e-commerce across Europe, and then I'll talk you through a little bit of research work we've done into China. Okay? <clears throat> so first of all, in terms of what Clarks do, I'm sure most of you know, but not everybody necessarily knows, we make shoes. We've been making shoes for a long time, and we're based down in Somerset, so generally means we're quite nice people. We're, we're a global business, <clears throat> so I think in the UK, most people know Clarks as a retailer. Across the globe, most people will know Clarks as a brand. We make most of our money through selling through wholesalers, and a lot of what I will talk about will be through that kind of lens and the context that gives what we do and, and the challenges that creates. So in terms of Clarks on the web, we've got a number of e-commerce stores. We launched an e-commerce store in the UK in 2008. Um, I launched our European stores in 2011. We've got a US store that used to be powered by Zappos. We took it over about two years ago. Uh, we've recently launched a, a website in India and recently launched a website in Australia. And then we've got about another 25 marketing sites around the world. Now, as I said, I, I work in Europe. Europe is predominantly a wholesale market for Clarks. We've got three models in, in the territories. We've got some countries that are run by subsidiary companies. We've got some countries that are, are run by agents on behalf of Clarks. And we've got some countries that are distributor markets. So that makes it quite a challenge in terms of our e-commerce strategy and how we, how we operate. In terms of what I do, I run a German language site, a French language site, a Spanish language site, Dutch language site, and we've also got a de facto English site because we delivered to 15 countries across Europe. So those four sites are in local language. Those are the sites that give us our biggest payback for being localized. In terms of our proposition, <clears throat> as I say, we deliver to 15 countries. We offer free delivery. We've got an express service, uh, which we charge six euros for. It's about 48 hours. Um, we offer free returns. We've got a free hotline, and, and that proposition is about us being competitive in the market. It's not about us trying to be in front of the market, but making sure that when people compare us to shopping at other places, we're in their consideration list. Now, in terms of the team that I run, um, I've got a trading team. So we call them virtual mer visual merchandisers, just right product, right place. I've got one for each site. I've got a trading manager. I've got a couple of client side coders. And I've got a content team, and we made a, a, a big decision right at the beginning that we would go with native content editors. So all the content on our sites is produced by my team. So the content editors, I've got one native for each country. They write the equivalent of about a novel and a half each year. We, we don't use any translation services yet. I think we probably could do to make our job easier, but at the moment, we don't. Then in terms of the challenges that we've faced over the last sort of two to three years, I think the biggest challenge I've got and we constantly face is that engagement with the territory teams. So most of my team is based in Street in Somerset. The team who run the Spanish site are based in Madrid. The team who run the Dutch site are based in Holland. And we get better engagement with the Dutch and Spanish teams from having those guys there but it also makes managing what they do slightly harder. So the big challenge is just getting engagement with those teams. These teams in territory, they're wholesalers, and we're e-commerce guys, and we just speak a different language. So I'm always trying to accentuate the positives of what we do. So the P&Ls, my P&L sits in their P&L as well. And then I also try and talk to them about other positives. So how many people are using a store locator? What visibility am I getting for the brand through SEO and things like that? Just always trying to talk it up because inevitably I'm seen as the enemy at times. <coughs> Other challenges we've got, I said we're based in Somerset. Our DC is based in Somerset. It's not the best place in the world for, for a DC. So, you know, delivery is not ideal. And cutoff times for express delivery is 3 o'clock in the afternoon. It's not great for the consumer. 
Um, in terms of URLs, we made a conscious decision right at the beginning. We would go with local URLs. We would go with .de. We would go with .fr. It's better for SEO. I think it's better for the consumer. <laughs> but it's just something you need to think about and, and consider. I've already explained this. All our words come from our, our content editors. I employ French people and German people in Somerset. It felt like a challenge to get French and German people in Somerset. It is a challenge, but I think you know, the payback works for us. Our call center is outsourced. We work with a company called Sykes, a, a global business. Our call center is based in Edinburgh. They have native people answering the phone. Um, they've done a great service for us, a great job. In terms of payment, I don't think I'm going to tell you anything you don't, don't know or, or haven't heard before. You've got to be, got to provide local payment services. In, in Holland, it's all about ideal payment, which is a method of bank transfer. As Martin said, Germans don't like credit cards. We take ELV payment. I kind of wish I didn't, because it's a really painful payment method to take. It has some really strange rules. But if I don't take it, there'll be a lot of sales I miss. Uh, I'm working to take a payment method called SOFOR, which is bank transfer, and I also want to take payment by invoice as well. Uh, and PayPal is, is pretty strong across Europe. A high percentage of your sales come via PayPal. But, but ultimately, if you only take credit cards, you won't maximize your potential. So in terms of the lessons we've had from, from doing this over the last couple of years, um, I'm going to become a little bit nationalistic because... There's a lot of cliches about people's behavior I find is, is quite true online. So firstly, Germans are very fastidious people. They shop by product type. So what I mean by that is when they're shopping for shoes, they shop for shoes or boots. They're very exact in the terminology they use. Um, the technology that we have in the shoes uh, is very important to them. They want to know all the information about those products. They plan their purchases ahead. So we find Germany is our first market going into the new season. So they will be buying sandals in February because they are planning for their summer holidays. They like to use internal search an awful lot, and they use a lot of left-hand nav. And we get an awful lot of calls to our call center from people who bought shoes from us 10 or 15 years ago going, the soles have fallen off. What are you going to do about it? <laughs> but we have to deal with them. That, that's the sort of reality about being in the German market. Um, you probably hear this quite a lot, but returns rates are painful in Germany. So number of retailers I've spoken to, I've got a returns rate of sub 40%. I've been told that's pretty good for Germany. I know there are people who, who have higher returns rates. If I take payment by invoice, that might push it up. But it is a fact of life. You're going to have a lot of returns. But they do spend money. So they have a highest average order value, and they convert at the highest rate. In terms of the marketing um, scene, paid search is very competitive. It's important to us, but it is very competitive. There's an awful lot of people bidding on our, on our brand terms. And SEO is also very competitive, and we found it the hardest market to get good SEO rankings. Affiliate commission is very high. It's much higher than in the UK, and it's taken us quite a while to get the affiliate market set up and working for us. So I'm going to say cliches are true for the Germans. They're also true for French. They're much more emotional. Um, much less internal search, much less use of uh, navigation on the left-hand side. They like to click in the middle of banners and, and content and things like that. They shop by end use, so they won't shop for shoes or boots. They'll shop by the end use, like workwear or summer wear or, or smart or something like that. A lot higher rates of engagement through sort of fashion content and static content and that sort of thing. They want to read about stuff a lot more. And they purchase when they need to purchase. So France is probably about our latest market into the season. They won't buy, start buying summer sandals till, till about now. Much lower conversion rates than, than Germany, but much less returns as well. So 
even Stevens, it comes out about the same turnover once you take, take returns out. It's a price-driven market online, so price is, is very competitive for them. Affiliate is a, is a very good marketing channel for us. Um, I don't know whether people have heard about this in France, but the sales in France have set dates when they happen. So the winter sale and the summer sale have a set date. So the summer sale is starting on the 26th of June. What we'll find leading up to the start of the summer sale is for two weeks our sales will just drop and drop and drop. And then at 8 a.m. on the 26th of June, we will just have the busiest day going because everybody in France knows the sale starts on the 26th of June and they line up and they go crazy on the 26th of June. Um, and probably about a year and a half ago, not many online retailers were doing frequent promos, but over the last six months, that seems to have really increased. And there's been a lot more uh, retailers in France sort of doing events, doing private sales, that sort of thing. And we've got some very good SEO results in France as well, through the same efforts we're putting in Germany, but just getting more traction. <clears throat> I've now got some, some lessons on, on Netherlands and Spain. We've been in those markets less, so that there's less things just to go through. Um, first thing I'd say about NL is it's a pretty tough market. Uh, conversion rates are much lower than we expected. Um, people tend to shop around. So you get a lot of people looking, but not as many people shopping or buying. Um, but higher returns rates than expected, not as high as Germany, but higher than France. Um, Netherlands react very well to promos. So we've run a couple of 20% off events, so get 20% off with this code for this week. We've seen better results doing that than we have running our winter sale, which is unusual for us. We'd, we'd expect more sales through the sale. Um, same as Germany, they move quickly into the new season. Um, and the other thing about NL is we get the best results from direct load. But I think some of that is down to the team we've got working in the Netherlands, and they get a lot more visibility for the URL out there. In terms of Spain, we get our lowest conversion rates in Spain. Um, it's compounded by the fact we get a lot of traffic from the Americas coming to read our Spanish language site. Unfortunately, we don't ship to the Americas, so that does push it down. But it is a, it's a, a low converting market at the moment. I think compared to the Netherlands, it's more window shopping and research than shopping around. Very low returns rates, probably the lowest returns rates we see. Uh, and we've had some superb SEO results. So it's, it's a fairly immature market. Uh, in terms of just some other things we've picked up, um, compared, to, uh, compared to the UK, usage of devices is, is quite behind in Europe. So in the UK, about 40% of our traffic comes from tablets and mobiles. In Europe, it's about half of that. NL's probably about the most advanced, about 15% of our traffic coming from tablet and about 12% from, from mobiles. Uh, and some other things that have worked really well for us is just doing some partnerships with third parties. We've had some, some excellent results doing that. So that's kind of a quick blast through some, some lessons and learns from me for Europe. And I wanted to just touch on, on Asia. So in Asia, we've got a number of... Um, different market models. It's predominantly wholesale, as, as, same as Europe. We haven't got any e-commerce live in Asia, apart from in India, where we recently launched an e-commerce site. Um, but I spent a few weeks last year just doing some research into Asia and thinking about what our strategy should be. So I've just got a, a bunch of learns to go through. Uh, some of them will get a bit repetitive, so apologies about that. But there's some interesting things in there. And some of them might be a little bit uh, deliberately provocative. So the first thing is, particularly for China, I don't think there is a license to go and print money online in China now, today. So and I'll go through and I'll explain that. I think it's going to take a while to start delivering that profit from China. Um, obvious thing to say, but um, online sales are growing across Asia Pack. Clark Shoes are present for sale across many sites. So people are shopping out there for it. But the market for full price shoes at the moment is fairly limited. And conversely, compared to what I'm doing in Europe, probably the cost base for, for setting up an operation and running an operation in Asia, it, it's probably cheaper because marketing is a bit cheaper and logistics is generally a bit cheaper. 
The Clark's brand is probably at risk in all territories from a combination of grey parallel imports. So with, if you look at Japan, if you look at Rakuten in Japan, if you look at Taobao in, in China, there's loads of grey imports of Clark's shoes on there. There's lots of last season's markdowns, and there's probably some products that are been called Clark's but aren't actually Clark's shoes. So the brand needs some protection out there. Um, what is selling though, Clark's shoes that are selling are mainly at a discount. And, and quite a lot of it is a substantial discount. Marketplaces are, are huge in Asia, and I've got some other bits on, on the size of marketplaces and that sort of thing, but they are absolutely the dominant, dominant factor out there. Um, just sort of what I've already said, but the, the brand needs to establish a strong online presence in Asia um, to exploit the opportunity when it comes along. The opportunity will happen, there's an opportunity now for us to get live, do some test and learn, see what's there, and then when the market really kicks in, be on that escalator and, and take that escalator right up rather than trying to jump on the escalator once it's already started moving. Next is just a slide looking at uh, a forecast of online footwear sales uh, across Asia. There's a few interesting things in here for me. So blue at the bottom is China, growing astronomically quickly. The next one is Japan, which doesn't always get talked about, but it is a sizable market. And it's a more mature market than China, and probably a better full price market than China. The little blue line here is, is India, which, according to this forecast, isn't going to grow very much at all. And then the dark green line is quite interesting as well, because that doesn't get mentioned much, which is Korea. So there's a sizable opportunity for us in, in Korea as well. Okay, so in, in terms of China, um, it's a huge market. There's over 500 million consumers. But we believe that the market is currently very small for, for full-price Clark shoes. Um, C to C completely dominates. Um, Taobao is the dominant platform, uh, and it does about 80% of the total e-commerce market in China. Uh, and products and prices on there are cheap. And there's lots of grey goods on there, and there's lots of fakes as well. Um, Tmao, which is Taobao's B2C partner and is entwined with, with Taobao, um, is where brands set up their stores, and they're interlinked via search. And we believe to have any kind of e-commerce presence in China, you need to have a store on Tmao. Most, most payment is taken by card, cash or delivery, or via Alipay. Alipay is part of Taobao family or Alibaba. Um, someone's got a sense of humor who, who named them. Um, as I said, brand protection on, on Tmail, I think it's, it's vital. Um, that's probably more important than the commercial benefit at this stage. We did an estimation that, that somebody running a Tmail store selling similar products to us is probably taking about 50K a month. So that's why, back to the first point I made about it's not necessarily a license to print money today. We reckon we'd get under 100,000 visitors a week. And when we started looking at conversion rate, that's when we started thinking there's not as much money to make here. Because conversion rate, we understand a sub 1%. We thought 0.2% might be a reasonable conversion rate to expect, which is pretty low. Um, search engines are very different in China. Um, there's Beidou. And in, in, on Beidou, you can, buy, you can buy the first page of search results if you own the brand name. You can buy that page. You pay a quarterly fee for it. It's not paid on click-through or anything like that. You can set up videos on there and everything like that, make it a really nice branded site. But the one problem with Beidou is that Tmail and Tabao uh, exclude their search results from Beidou. So actually, the search engine that's used most for e-commerce is Tabao and Tmail. Um, and at the moment, we think if we set up a site, we'd, we'd probably be doing 10 to 20% full price, and the rest might be reduced price, obviously depending on our, our strategy. Um, <clears throat> in terms of setup, our, our recommendation for Clarks was to go with a local service provider. We don't think it would be possible for us to do that here now. So go with someone who's local. There are lots of local service providers out there who can do most of the job, if not all the job for you. They could probably get it up in three to four months. They do a really good job. 
there'd be a setup fee and there'd be a percentage commission taken on top of that. Um, lots of people doing logistics out there, less people doing platforms, but there's still plenty of people available. Uh, and you do need to work with people in China to get it to work. Uh, and just to go back to what I was saying about South Korea, this is more a sort of, <coughs> I put Hong Kong, Taiwan, and South Korea on there because they're run out of our China office, but there are definitely opportunities there. And in terms of uh, Japan, there's a good opportunity there. It shouldn't be, shouldn't be dismissed. Um, lots of people in, in Japan have access to the internet. Um, it is generally quite a young people using the internet, but that's growing. Um, marketplaces are huge in Japan like they are in China. Uh, most important one is Rakuten. Uh, brand presence on Rakuten for most brands is quite low, similar to, to China. It's a lot of grey imports, it's some fake products as well. Um, one marketplace we found in, we found in China that um, we thought was a very good brand fit for us was a marketplace called Zozo Town, who do a lot of branded clothes and goods and that sort of thing, and really seem to understand the market and were willing to do partnerships and that sort of thing. So that's something we're looking at in a bit more depth. Um, and also just our advice back, back to our Asia team was you could probably find a partner who could do Japan and Southeast Asia, which might be separate to a partner doing, doing China. Uh, and the other thing that was different in, in Japan to China was in China you can find service providers who can do the full works for you. In Japan that seemed a lot harder and you probably need to work with people who do each separate bit. <coughs> 